Let's talk about Netflix's new show, Narcos, was just released last Friday, the 27th or 28th, one of those days. And it entail, it tells the story of the, the life of Pablo Escobar and the DE agents sent from the United States to help the Colombian government kind of put an end to what was going on with uh, all the drug trafficking and everything with Pablo Escobar. So it is just a really enthralling, <laughs> enthralling TV show. Now, I'm going to say something that if you ever watch the show, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I don't like watching things with subtitles. I really don't. It distracts me. I don't like having to look, read the subtitles and look up and see what's going on. I like to be able to see the expression on the face of the actors as the lines are being delivered. Brian well, like this reading. One, uh, that too. But this, this one is half, half subtitles and half in English. Because, like I said, it tells the story of both Pablo Escobar and the DEA agents uh, sent to to help take him down. So every part with Pablo in it, of course, is in Spanish, and all the parts with the American DEA agents are in English. And so it pretty much splits up almost 50-50 down, down the middle of what's in there. So uh, now this uh, the people who are acting in this movie, uh, we have Wagner Mora uh, as Pablo Escobar, and this guy is pretty good in his role. Then we have Boyd Holbrook as Agent Murphy, the main DEA agent, and then Pedro Pascal as Agent Pena, who is the secondary character as a DEA agent. Now, as ter in terms of the acting, the main actors are very good. Pablo Escobar, the guy who plays him, is just spectacular, because there's a lot of times where they show you like actual footage of Pablo Escobar and what he did, and they show you that they're kind of recreating some of these scenes from because Pablo Escobar lived a very public life, especially in Colombia. Mm -hmm. He owned soccer teams. He ran for Congress. He did a lot in the public spotlight, even though people knew he was kind of a drug trafficker. He gave away a lot of money to the poor and stuff and kind of bought himself some loyalty that way. So he was afforded the, the privilege of being in the spotlight very, uh, very often. And so they show up. There's a lot of times where they're just kind of showing, OK, this is Pablo. And then this is us recreating it, and it, it the, the actor pretty much he's got a he's got Pablo down to a T, so that's that's pretty good. Then, uh, then you have the secondary DEA agent who is played uh, by Pod Pedro Pascal, uh, Agent Pena, and this guy is an awesome character too. Uh, he's been when we pick up with him, he's already been in Colombia for a little while. He's developed contacts. He's been working with the Colombian government for quite a while trying to track down these uh, narco uh, traffickers. And he is just the perfect, like, bad cop, but still tries to get a good thing done. You know, <laughs> might might slap somebody around a little bit, but to get the answers he's looking for. Um, and he walks this line between just almost going over the edge and not quite going over the edge. And it's just a really cool dual character. Uh, you, you definitely see two sides to this guy in multiple places. Uh, and it's very entertaining. And those are the type of characters I love because there's a lot of depth to those characters. You can tell that he's kind of been twisted a little bit by what he's seen going on in Colombia. And so he, that kind of changes the way he he enforces the law down there. So he's a really good character. My only quasi complaint would be the guy playing Agent Murphy, who is the main character of this show. Uh, now, the character's kind of stiff a little. You know, it, it, he doesn't quite portray everything that I'd like to see out of his character. Um, now, his character, Agent Murphy, is he is more of a, a, a straight shooter. He tries to follow the law a little bit more. He's not opposed to, you know, maybe roughing somebody up here or there or something like that. But he's a little more, more of a straight edge, at least when he first shows up. In, in the first couple episodes, he loosens up a little bit as it goes on. And I'm only four episodes in, so he probably there's going to be a lot more differences with him. But he usually is just kind of straightforward. Now, he doesn't mind getting some narcos killed, as they show you in the first episode. But he's not the one doing it. He just reports where they are to the Colombian authorities. And the Colombians just go in and kill everybody. So, hey. Ah. Uh, okay. well, those are the three main characters you get um, in the show. There are plenty of secondary characters. And a lot of them do play beautiful roles. I just we can't get into everybody right now. But those are the ones you want to watch. Oh, and by the way, uh, the guy who plays Agent Murphy also narrates the entire story. And his voice is excellent for a narrator. So... That's is he as thing. good as Morgan Freeman? No, nobody's as good as Morgan Freeman. Is he as good as Julia Roberts? Does Julia Roberts really do narration? Yeah, in fact, he does. Uh, well, kind of. 
She has the voice of Mother Earth in some YouTube series. Okay, so but one she's really like narrating. rare and random uh, thing. <laughs> yep. No. Yeah, she's not... <laughs> It's not. He's not as good as Leonard Nimoy. He's not as good as James Earl Jones. And I'm, fine, he's. Not I'm as sure good as he's. Rob. It's interesting that you pick two people that are no longer living. So you're saying he's <laughs> well, okay, but there are two iconic narrators. Yeah, they they are. They're amazing. Yes, except not you. anymore. Right. <laughs> I don't well, think they're doing very. Well. If they, you know, if either of them did a narration now, <laughs> it probably would be uh, just the greatest thing to. to I, I would watch any movie that had. Leonard Nimoy currently, or well, okay. <laughs> anyway, either of them but currently. They are good uh, narrators. narrators. So, um, and so the writing on the whole show is actually pretty believable. Oh, it's in the moment, you, you realize that these are all crazy people, and a lot of crazy things happen, but the writing is pretty good, and it keeps you in the moment. So overall, I'm going to give it a total score of a 4.0 uh, for Chewbacca Chainsaws out of 5. Um, and that's just you're gonna because... you're going to get a grade point average. 4.0, yeah. Four, yeah. No, it's, it's, that's Chewbacca Chainsaws out of five. Um, now, the show is really good. I it's, you know, it's a Netflix show, so it's one of those things where you can't just watch one episode. It's damn near impossible just to watch one episode. I've had someone Every there time. that I could watch one episode. Okay, well, fine. All right. There's Brendan doing his best to derail me again. I'm just saying. they, they No, you're just trying to they derail They have some the very quality shows. They are no longer I've at a perfect record. I've trying to derail me at least once or twice, but now I have to do it. I have to put my foot down. No more derailments, Brendan. But yeah, so, you brought up the topic. Uh, you you brought up the topic. It wasn't a topic. That was a statement. It was not a topic. Um, <laughs> False statement. But yeah, the whole show is is really cool. They do make it take place a little bit more towards the late '90s, which was kind of. I mean, not sorry, not late '90s, late '80s. I apologize. To early '90s, which was kind of Pablo's heyday. I wish they would have focused a little bit more on what's going on with him, um, a little more of an upbringing, an origin story. But they kind of, the first time you see Pablo, he's already an established smuggler. He just hadn't gotten into the cocaine trade. So it, it just seems like they fast forwarded a little bit in his life. Now, there's plenty of room for them to flash back, and they have done that several times to go back and tell a little bit more of the earlier story of mm. Pablo Escobar. But I kind of wish they would have started earlier because this makes me think that we're only going to get one season out of narcos and that would be a shame because this show is excellent so i want to keep seeing it so i wish they would have started a little bit earlier in his life but who knows you know these writers they have ways of tying it all back together so they're, they're, if it does successful enough i'm sure i'm 100 percent sure we will have a narcos season two so there's no worries there but let me know if you've seen it what are your thoughts on narcos the tv show is it something you want to binge watch all the way through or is it something you're going to leave to the side uh, hit us up let us know comments down below of course at where's my face on twitter and google plus and facebook always good ways to get home.